This is Outsource School's VA budget calculator. Now, keep in mind, I am doing this on Google Docs right now. You might be downloading it in Excel. It might look slightly different, but it's gonna work in exactly the same way. The biggest thing to remember as you're going through this is only edit the cells that are light blue. If you edit any of the other cells, they are formulas, you might mess them up. Obviously, if you are advanced in Excel, if you understand Excel, go for it. You can tweak it however you want. But for those of you that are not, please only touch the cells that are light blue, not dark blue, just light blue. Now, going through this activity, as you can see at the top, we want you to understand the numbers in your current business, factoring in anyone that you've already hired, any full-time employees, any VAs you've already hired, things like that. We want you to be able to figure out how aggressive you want to be when it comes to hiring. You'll be able to see below that you can change that percentage. So you can see what it looks like if you are investing 40% of your net profit, what it's, look like, what it's going to look like if you only invest 10% of your net profit. So you'll be able to tweak that and get a better understanding for how many virtual assistants you can actually afford. We want you to look at what your budget is for additional virtual assistants, which will show you how many virtual assistants you can afford either right now or going forward. Because even though free up our last business had 35 plus full-time VAs, we didn't just wake up one day and hire 35 people. We had a plan for hiring more and we started small two part-time eventually made them full-time then added another full-time. You can see all that in our case study, but, we, we, if you know how many you can afford in total, then you can create a plan. Hey, I'm going to hire one this month, two next month, whatever it is. Now, as you can see in the assumption here, right here, the a normal virtual assistant from the Philippines is going to be in that five to $10 an hour range. I've hired some really great VAs that are around five bucks an hour. And I've hired some that I started at five that I've given raises to that eventually made 20 plus an hour as team leaders or assistant team leaders. And I've had some that are in that seven or eight or nine range. So usually five to 10 is a good ballpark, maybe five to eight if you're just getting started. And what you can see here as you go to the first light blue box is you're gonna put in what rate you're assuming that you're going to pay. This is one of those cells that you can edit I'm gonna start with the number seven, seven dollars an hour. And even though I can get really good VAs at five bucks an hour, making it seven gives me a little bit of a buffer. What if I wanna give them a raise? What if they work 45 hours a week instead of 40? What if I'm interviewing four different VAs and the one that I really like really wants 650 an hour, is used to getting six dollars an hour from other clients. I like to avoid lowballing virtual assistants. I wanna give them a rate that they're happy with or not hire them at all. So this gives you a little bit of wiggle room. The last thing you wanna do is budget everything out at five bucks an hour and see that you can hire one full-time VA, but the VA that you wanna hire is a little bit more. So factor that into your budget. Next over here is a chart. So if you hire a VA at seven bucks an hour, it's gonna cost you $70 a week. It's gonna cost you $280 a month and $3,640 for the year. And you can see, I put here 10, 20, 30, 40. You can see what the difference is if you hire them part-time versus full-time. Now, this blue box right here is the box that's gonna affect everything below. If you look at row 25 down, that's all affected by this blue box right here. That's why the number 40 is a little bit bigger. So if I wanna go in here and change it to 45, that's going to affect the numbers below. If I wanna change it to 50, same thing, it's gonna affect below. So I'm gonna set this at 40. 40 hours a week is what a lot of people consider full time. We'll talk about this in the next session when we talk about virtual assistants, but sometimes VAs in the Philippines tend to work 50, 60 hours a week. That's not out of the question. And if you're hiring a VA for 40 hours a week and they're just gonna go out and get a part-time client for 10 or 20 hours to fill their extra time, you might wanna consider just hiring them for that extra 10 or 20 hours and getting the most out of them so they don't go out and get another client. So you're gonna, you can see here, depending on what rate you put here, that's gonna affect the amount that you're paying per week, per month, and per year. Now, if you go down even further, this is where you're gonna put in the net profit that your business makes every month. I recommend taking an average. So whatever your net profit is for the past three months or six months or four months, whatever you wanna use, keep in mind that businesses sometimes have peak seasons or, or low seasons. So figure out what you normally make net profit, be a little conservative there. I always like to be conservative whenever I'm dealing with financials and put that number right in here. 
And that's gonna give you your yearly net profit, which you should understand for your business, regardless of whether you're hiring virtual assistants. Now, this net profit is after you've already paid all expenses, and those expenses include other virtual assistants, other employees that you have. If you have other VAs, let's say you have two full-time VAs, you're paying those before you get down to net profit. So this should really be the bottom line of what your business makes after you've paid all of their expenses, all other people, because we now wanna say, hey, we this is how much we're making, and now how much, what percentage of that are we gonna to invest towards new hires, new virtual assistants, new people for the team? And when you get to number 25, row to, or 28, you're gonna be able to change the percentage. Again, another light blue box where you can put in how aggressive or how conservative you wanna be. I've mentioned a few times that with FreeUp, we, we tend to be in that 20 to 30%. So 20 to 30% of our net profits, we would reinvest into hiring. We saw hiring as, and we believe that hiring is a great way to expand your business. So instead of putting that money in our pocket, we would look towards, hey, we now know that we're gonna spend 25% or 30 or whatever it is into hiring. Now, where can we put that money to best use? Is it a VA, is it a bookkeeper, is it a social media person, whatever it is, but we needed to know how much money we wanted, we had to play with. So I'm gonna put 25% here, feel free to adjust it. Again, it's a range, I like to, to go a little bit over, so I'll say 30%, but if one month it comes in at 28 or 25 or 27, I've already accounted for that because I put 30. So I'll start this at 25, and, and I'm gonna go through a, a few examples of a small business, a medium business, and a large business a, as well. So how much can you spend on hiring? That's gonna show you, that's essentially taking 25% of your net profit, um, and it's gonna show you, hey, that means you can spend $576 per week, $2,500 per month, or $30,000 for the year. And if you do some quick math here, $30,000 for the year and a full-time VA for seven bucks an hour costs about 14.5, then that's gonna get you two virtual assistants and it, two full-time virtual assistants. And you can see right here, this is a dark blue box, so don't edit it, only edit the light blue boxes. Um, and you always wanna round down because you can't hire part of a person. However, let's say this said 2.9, what that tells you is you can hire two full-time VAs and potentially a part-time VA at 20 or 30 hours a week. So by putting in these numbers, it's gonna tell you how many VAs you can hire. Again, if you change this box right here, let's say I make this 20, it's gonna tell me I can hire four part-time VAs. If you wanna diversify, and if you've seen any of my content, and we'll talk about this more a little bit later too, if I'm gonna hire a customer service rep for 40 hours a week, no one works 365 days a year. No one doesn't take vacations or anything like that. So I might hire two people at 20 hours a week instead of one person at 40 so they can cover for each other and then later on I can increase their hours. So this lets you play around with that. So let's go through a few examples. I'm gonna start off with a, a smaller business. Let's say a business that, that, doesn't, that isn't making a ton of money now, but the owner is swamped with work and they wanna see how many VAs they can afford. I'm gonna set this for 650. Let's say the person knows that they don't wanna pay seven, they wanna stay on the cheaper end, they're gonna to try to get someone for five, but they're gonna go in 650. I'm also gonna say this person has a lot of work that needs to be done, and they wanna hire someone for 45 hours a week. And let's say that they make about $8,000 a month in net profit, which comes out to $96,000 a year, pretty good business, making almost 100 grand a year. Let's say they're in year one or, or something like that, year one, year two and they're just getting started, they're a solo entrepreneur. Now, this shows that they can hire one full-time VA for 45 hours a week. Now, if they wanted to, and they wanted to hire one person for 60 hours a week, that still works. They're still able to hire that person um, because when you round down, that's still more than one. If they wanted to hire a few part-time VAs, they could actually hire three part-time VAs, three VAs for 20 hours a week. So now you understand how this works. If I wanted to mess with this a little bit more, let's say that they wanted to pay a little bit more and it's eight bucks an hour, but they just wanted to pay 40 hours a week, they could still hire one full-time VA for 40 hours a week at $8 an hour. Now, let's look at a slightly bigger business. Let's say the business wants to, doesn't want to pay five bucks an hour, they want to pay a little bit more to get a better virtual assistant. They hire someone for around eight bucks an hour. Let's say they want to maximize, they're going to hire someone for 55 hours a week. And let's say that they're making $25,000 a month in profit, pretty good business. 
That's 300,000 net profit for the year. And they're hiring VAs for eight bucks an hour for 55 hours a week. They can hire three full-time virtual assistants. If you lower that to 40 hours a week, that's gonna get it over four. So they could actually hire four VAs at 40 hours a week at eight bucks an hour. And lastly, let's do a bigger business. I'm gonna say that they're gonna even go a little bit higher. Let's say 850. I'm gonna say that they're gonna maximize the VAs. They're gonna make them work 60 hours a week. And, and they make about $50,000 a month in profit. So $600,000 for the year. You can and see here that they can afford five full-time VAs that are working 60 hours a week and they're paying them $8.50 an hour. Now, if they're able to get the VAs cheaper, let's see what happens here. At only five, they can hire nine virtual assistants and because it's 9.62, they could really hire nine full-time VAs working 60 hours a week and another VA at 30 hours a week, or maybe they wanted to hire eight at 60 hours a week and they'd be able to hire two at 40. So that gives them a lot of virtual assistant power. You can also do the math if you wanted to figure out that, hey, how, many, how much manpower, how much woman power does that actually give you? If you take the nine, let's say nine full-time VAs times 60 hours a week, that's 540 hours of manpower, of woman power, of virtual assistant power, which is a lot more than any business owner can work in a given day.